Yeah, so you'll notice this specimen is nicely flat. Um, the leaves haven't curled up and, and dried up or anything like that because we, when you collect them, we use newspaper mostly or you know whatever you, paper you're lying around in the field and you'll place the plant between here this absorbs all the moisture and then you'll put it between you know your two planks of wood um, and we'll use a belt to tighten it um, they'll also have uh, drying rooms at, or drying cabinets at some collections so you can put it in there with a fan and a heater and things to speed that process up and then everything gets put into freezers uh, to kill any insect pests because if something gets in here, it will just eat everything and you won't notice till it's too late. Yeah, so if you're interested in pressing plants yourself, either uninfected or infected disease plants, um, you just pick, uh, it's good to include the, the stem and the leaves because that helps you for identifying it. And then also if there's any fruit and flowers, the more material, the better. And then you'll place it in your newspaper. And if you have a fancy press, you would press it like that and tie your belt to keep it tight. Um, alternatively, just if you still have phone books, um, grab a pile of them and dump them on top and give it a couple of weeks. Um, the more fleshy and wet the specimen is, you, you might need to change the newspaper out. Um, and you can't press mushrooms, um, but we, air, we dry them in silica, you know the little, the little packets of silica you get when you buy things to keep them dry, we have lots of that and we'll put it in a container and that sucks all the moisture out of them that way. Insects can last for hundreds of years. The part you see in drawers, um, like here, uh, is the outer shell. Unlike vertebrates that have the, an internal structure that keeps them upright, insects have all their hardened parts on the outside, allowing them to stay, once correctly dried and preserved, they can last hundreds of years. Some insects, in this case, are galling insects. They get largely on eucalypts and they form these great big woody galls that are quite specific, which you can see here. These are the original wooden bits and labels that they made from the 1890s. Um, so whilst these aren't actually insect specimens, they're plant specimens that have insects in them. If they're dry, dried and you can keep the humidity out of them, they're fine. This is in, in an air conditioned room. It's essentially library conditions where we have fire prevention, a range of other things. They can burn quite easily. So <laughs> Part of what makes these insect specimens last so long virtually indefinitely is because the exoskeleton, the outside part of the body that Peter was talking about, is made up of a carbohydrate called chitin, which is very structurally similar to the keratin that makes up our fingernails and our hair. And so the exoskeleton of the beetle is made of all of these long fibers of cross-linked chitin that are laid down in overlapping kind of rotated layers, which is essentially how they make Kevlar, the stuff they make uh, bulletproof vests out of. So essentially, these insects have invented Kevlar technology long before humans ever did, and that's part of why they're so incredibly durable. So when we get a culture, it's uh, put onto a particular media, and it grows across. And these ones are put onto a um, water agar media with a carnation leaf that's been put on it as well. So once it's grown across the carnation leaf, we put them into um, these glass ampules, and then they're freeze dried. So the beauty of this uh, technique is that they last for a long, long time. Some of the cultures here that we have to go back to the mid 1970s, and they are still viable and grow well. We also have another method that uh, is an older method, where cultures were grown on a, um, a, an agar. Um, these are stored under a sterile mineral oil, which stops the air getting to them and it basically stops it um, from going any further. And they're, they're good on this for about three years, but we have to continuously grow them out and put them onto new media, otherwise they will die. So um, the disadvantage with a technique like this is that their characteristics do change over the years. Another method that we have is storing them into the minus 80 freezer and um, that's uh, reasonably new, probably in the last 10 or 15 years, I suppose. Again, the mycelium is stored and put into a special preservation uh, liquid that um, preserves them and keeps them there 
we don't know for how long at this stage, but that seems to be uh, pretty exciting that that's going to be a, a very good method as well for keeping them alive for as long as we can. Unfortunately, some of the um, fungi that we have don't actually like the, uh, the two newer method or the, the freeze drying or the microbanking, so we still have to put them onto this, but it's quite labour intensive, so the less we have on these, the better. This room is kept at a constant uh, temperature and humidity to uh, help the cultures survive long term.